Good morning. Today, I'd like to share with you about the title of Wise Man's Exhortation. Right? We know of the story of the wise man. Right? Every time when we maybe watch cartoon or you know, since young or listen to children's story, you know, we will learn about this wise man. So today, we're going to uh, share and learn something about this wise man right, later on. Right? To begin with, Right, would like to uh, ask this question: What's so special about Christmas? Right, is it just a holiday? Right, some of, some of us may treat uh, Christmas as a holiday to rest, to relax. Right, so you can uh, go for a long weekend. You know, maybe you want to go to somewhere. Right, to tour. Right, or is it just a fashion since everybody is celebrating? You know, right now. Uh, Christmas, every time you, you can see there are so many parties, right? There are so many um, gift exchanges. You can see Santa Claus, right? So you do not really know, hey, is this Christmas, right? I want to share with you today that this Christmas is actually a day to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ, right? And just now I mentioned Together with the birth, we actually can also remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. But, you see, December 25th, right, today, just nice, you know, right, 25th of uh, December falls on a Sunday. Usually, you don't, right, but this, this year it does, okay? So, but 25th of December is not the actual birthday of Jesus, you know that? So today is not the birthday of Jesus, you know. <laughs> okay? So why is this day chosen? Right? Why today is, is why, why today, 25th of December, is chosen to, to celebrate the, the Christmas? Right? And, uh, you know, many people will say that, uh, actually, if you go and Google, they say that actually uh, the Christians actually hijacked the uh, a holiday, hijack a, a holiday in from the Romans, you know, from the Romans, because in that time, at that time, they have uh, they worship the sun god, okay, known as Sol Invictus, okay. So at that time, which is uh, near the winter solstice, okay, so they will worship this uh, uh, sun god because it is the time when the sun. Okay, or we say that the length of the day starts to get longer, right? A few days back, you know, the Chinese celebrated Tongzi. How many of you celebrated Tongzi or not? My mother summoned me and go back home, you know. <laughs> you know, I was, I came back uh, on, uh, from Thailand on Thursday from my mission trip. And Thursday, I was actually very tired. Then I received a call from my mother. So he come back and eat reunion dinner because it's tongzi. Right? So you know what is tongzi? Tongzi, the, you know, the, the, in the winter, right, the, the day is very short. The night is very long. Right? So when you call tongzi, it means the, the day will start to get longer. So it's the fall of darkness. It's the victory of light okay okay so that's why is they use this so winter solstice to celebrate the victory of the sun god okay so that's why they if you google you know in the christmas how this come about there's a saying that christians actually hijack a pagan festival right and so this day is actually a pagan festival that people use to celebrate. Okay. However, I also want to tell you that recent study is that people have discovered, you know, a lot of uh, uh, findings and papers record, right? That this uh, celebration of Christmas can be dated to as early as AD 200, okay, AD 200, and so Invictus only came about, right, in about 267 AD, and recent study says that Sol Invictus actually only came about 
in the 12th century. Right, so which, what, is this, what does it mean? It, it means that from the early Christians, people were actually celebrating Christmas before the Romans celebrated the victory of Sun God. Okay? It was not a hijack of their pagan festival. However, I would want to also say that that also add meaning for Christmas, right? From this uh, pagan festival, it also add meaning to us. So Christians actually celebrate Christmas before this pagan festival came into place. Okay. However, this festival, the meaning of it, right, was subsequently also adopted by the Christians so that we have a deeper meaning of what is Christmas. You know, in Soul Invictus, people celebrate the victory of Sun God, S-U-N, right? So after that, you know, certain so people were saying that we hijacked because we, from there, when, when Christians try to add a deeper meaning, especially to the Romans, when they have, you know, come to know Jesus Christ, you, you can understand that, you know, at the time that the Romans were all worshipping the sun god. You know, and in AD 337, Constantine instituted, you know, December 25th to be officially a Christmas day in the Gregorian calendar. You know, so, so you can understand at the time, therefore, Christian tries to help the Romans to understand you know, it's not the victory of sun, S-U-N, but it's the victory of the sun, S-O-N. You understand? So, however, that is, the, that is to help the Romans, you know, at the time of the, you know, on the situation, to help people to understand what really Christmas is about. Okay? However, this, after this explanation, okay, we still have an answer. Why, why is it 25th? Okay? Why is it 25th? Okay, so in the early church, I want to say that in the early church, they believed that the conception of Jesus Christ fell on March 25th. Okay, fall on March 25th. So nine months later is 25th of December. Okay, so that's how it came about, 25th of December, because they believed the conception, right, when the Gabriel angel you know, told Mary, right? The uh, early church believed that the date was March 25th. Okay? However, again, uh, this is what the early church believed because there is uh, also nobody really knows about the exact date, you know, about when Jesus was exactly born. There are some theories that say that Jesus was probably born slightly later, about January the 6th. You know, there are also some theologians that you know, from the events that happened uh, in the Bible that said that Jesus was born about end of September, right? However, whatever the date is, is really not really that important for us, okay? It's just like every day you can celebrate your birthday, you know? <laughs> you know, because the important thing is that you know this day, your birthday, is the day that God gave you life that your, through your parents, Right? So that's the most important thing that you know the significance of it. So since the early church, you know, that they have, you know, um, accepted that March 25th is the day that Mary was conceived and nine months later, 25th of December, the day that Jesus was born. So the world started to adopt this, right? Since the time of Constantine, the Roman emperor. Right? So this is how this day was chosen, right? So, real birthday of Jesus, really, we do not know, right? So, we know that it's probably not today, okay? But, same thing, we can rejoice in the significance of this very special day that we are commemorating, right? So, we are just commemorating the birthday of Jesus. It is not this day, right, that is the birth of Jesus, okay? So the most important thing is the birth of a saviour on earth. 
Right. So um, for those who have been with us, you know, you know that throughout this whole month, we've been looking about a few of the stories in the Bible about uh, our Savior, about Jesus Christ. And for those of us who are here today, I want to tell you that, you know, in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, there are many prophecies about the Savior that tell us that there is going to, God is going to send a Savior, a Messiah, okay, to save the world because of our, our sin. And subsequently, right, in the New Testament, right, we will see all this about the announcement of the birth of the Savior. Right, firstly, through this uh, Elizabeth and uh, Zechariah, the relative of uh, Mary, right? Because Mary, uh, Elizabeth actually conceived before uh, Mary. So this serves to authenticate that what the Holy Spirit said, what God said to Mary is true, right? And subsequently, Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And then the news was subsequently also announced to the shepherds, right? I'm sure you also heard about the story about the shepherds. And then this news, this this uh, this uh, baby Jesus was also presented and in the temple and saw by prophetess Anna and prophet Simeon, right? So uh, those of us who have attended the past uh, sermons, right, you will see we've been preaching on this story. And today we're going to look at the wise men, right? About the wise men. Okay, we first cover the star track, not star track, no, but the star track. Okay, now in verse two it says, uh, "Now after uh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem." Right. So, wise men. Here, wise men is actually some uh, being uh, translated as magi. Okay, this is where. Uh, the word magic actually came from. Okay, so it's in Greek, it's the plural of magos. Okay, so uh, these people from the East are believed to a, a priestly caste of learned men, probably from Media Persia area, right? The Assyria of Babylon. All right, so if you read the Old Testament, you will realize that this is uh, probably where the uh, Israelites were sent in exile. Okay, so that's why they were exposed to the teachings of God through the prophet Daniel, right? So the modern is about the modern day Iran, Iraq, Turkey area, okay? So they might have learned all this about the Messiah, about the Savior through Daniel, the prophet Daniel and his friends, right? So you, if you go back and read the story of Daniel, you can see how God done uh, did all these uh, miracles among these foreign nations. And even the foreign king also come to know and believe in God, right? So all these um, magi, the wise men would have learned from Daniel and his friends about the coming of the Messiah. Right? And you can see when they follow the star, they are likely to travel about 2,500 kilometers, you know, because uh, Babylon is about 2,700 kilometers away from Bethlehem. So, if they were to travel by camel, these people were likely to take about four to five months in order to look for the baby Jesus. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to say baby Jesus. Actually, that is again another myth. By the time the wise men actually looked for Jesus, Jesus was actually a toddler, okay? Not a baby. The picture that you always see, yeah, Again, it's not true because they always put all together, the shepherd and the wise men all appearing together when Jesus was born. Okay, it is not true, right? So that's why in my initial picture, if you see baby Jesus was already a toddler, not a baby. Okay, okay. so there's no mention of three wise men, right? You can see even in my picture, I can only find three wise men, <laughs> but... Frankly speaking, in the Bible, it never says there's only three wise men. It can be more than that. Okay, the three wise men come from the three gifts. The simple, since there are three gifts, so should be three percent. Okay, and there's no mention that they were kings. Okay, the Bible never says. So that's why, again, sometimes uh, when we tell the uh, children's story, then we say that ah, there are three wise men, they are all kings, you know, for the orange, and that's how all the songs came about, you know, but. Okay, the Bible actually didn't say they, who they are. So they are really probably just uh, really wise men who are 
who study religions, the stars, and all this, okay? So the, the word magic is derived from this word magi. There's no indication that they practice sorcery or black magic, okay? And they were actually totally sincere in the worship of uh, Jesus. Okay, now in verse 2 it says, so saying, where? Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? You can see his, they actually know that Jesus is the king of the Jews. For we saw his star when he rose and have come to worship him. Okay, so in verse 9 it says, After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. Okay, so you can see God revealed himself to the wise men, right through the stars. God actually revealed himself so that people will know that this Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah was already born. And this star signifies the light of life coming to the world. Right, so Jesus is the light of the world as contrast to the darkness of this world. Because you, as you all know, the world right now, the world today has been corrupted. Right? And Jesus, He being the light, has come to this world to show us the way. Okay, so this is the light that has overcome darkness of this world. And this light provides eternal life. Through this light, you, we know the way. You know, while we were in Thailand, something drastic happened, and that is blackout. You know? Wow, totally dark. We were actually celebrating Christmas, you know? Then whole thing, boom, in total darkness, right? And thank God, people who have lighted the candles and start to see the light. You know, you know how important light is especially while we are in darkness. And this world that we are living in is actually in darkness. And Jesus provides us and show through his light, show us the way to this eternal life. Right? So through this light, God revealed himself so that we can come to know him. Right? So I hope you know, that we do we really have that desire to let God reveal himself to you. Right? Ask yourself, do you really desire God to reveal Himself to you? Because God wants to reveal Himself to you so that you can come to know Him. You know, it's seemingly in this world that like, there are so many gods. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa, which is God? Last time I also had this uh, problem. You know, wow, so many gods, which is God? Everything is God. You know, there are people who worship as many gods as possible, right, to play safe. Right then, and then they are the other end. So in the end, there, since there are so many gods, I don't want to worship any gods. I don't care about gods. You know, I hope that today you will, will rethink about this question because what if there is a god? How this world came about, right? If there is no god, then nothing will happen to you, right? If you believe there's a god, but if there's a god and then you believe there's no god, something bad will happen to you. Right, so I hope that you rethink this very important question. Then right? let God reveal Himself to you. Right, at this point, I'd like to invite my wife, Shumian, to share a short uh, testimony, you know, of his uh, of her experience while in Thailand. Commercial break. Eh? <laughs> Okay, uh, just a short story that uh, actually after one week in Northern Thailand doing missions, we came down uh, to the city uh, on Monday. Uh, and on Monday, we decided to tour a bit lah, because we were with another two families and they wanted to see the Golden Triangle. They all know the Golden Triangle at the most northern part of Thailand. There's a point where you can see Myanmar, Laos, and Thailand. So they wanted to go there, so we went there and the travel was very, very far because we traveled from Chiang Mai to Chiang Rai. So at the end of the day, when we travel back by van, actually we were in a tourist van, so the van was actually a four-hour ride. A four-hour ride to like urban Singaporeans like us is actually quite a long time, I realized. So 
what happened was like it was all dark and in the van most of people are sleeping already so uh i had nothing to do so i looked out of the window and you 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 know what i saw a guy and in the sky actually i'm not i'm i'm not one person who observes stars but i recognize one star which is the orion by the three, you know, the three stars in the middle that forms the belt. So that's the only star I know. So I, I, I saw, I turned my eyes out to the sky and I said, hey, how come the, the stars are so bright? You know, you can't see this in Singapore at all. And it's full of stars. So I was quite amazed. And I just keep staring and staring and the stars just fix, my eyes were just fixed on the stars. And as we travel and I just stared and stared, and half an hour later, one hour later, I still see the same thing. And then I was like, wow, the stars follow, is following me. <laughs> so I was so uh, and amazed. And at that point of time, uh, God spoke to me and God revealed himself to me. And God reminded me of the, today's story. That's why I shared with you, uh, the three wise men. You know, the wise men, when they saw that star and they start traveling, it's not like us today that we know that where we are going, right? We have the GPS to tell us how far we are off. But the wise men, when they saw the star, they just walk and they start to travel and travel and they don't know how long they have to travel to find uh, Jesus. But they just travel and travel. And uh, they also don't have the GPS to say, oh, where is the next toilet break? <laughs> Where's the next rest stop that you can take your meals? They have nothing. They just travel and travel by faith. And they don't know what's at the end, how uh, Jesus will look like, where is the place where Jesus was born. They didn't know, but they just walked on and on. So actually through this experience with the stars, I was encouraged by God to spur me to continue walking on. We may not know what's ahead of us. We may not know what our destination is like. We may not know even when is the end of our, our journey, but God says, just have faith in him and just walk on, just like the Magi. Ultimately, they found Jesus and they were so happy, they praised Jesus. So uh, that's just a little encouragement that God actually spurred me through the stars. Thank you. Yeah, so you know, you know, if you are lost in the jungle, this is what you got to rely on, right? You know, because from the start, you know what is the direction, where is north, where is south, where is east, where is west. You know where to head, right? So, so the stars can actually show us direction. And this is what God has created. Even through the stars can tell us the direction, you know? So, you know, through the stars that God can tell you the direction for your life. Now the star revealed in uh, after the star is tracked, the star was revealed, right? In verse eleven, and going to the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they fell down to worship him. And then opening the treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, and frankincense and milk. Okay, so you can see the, the wise men they have discovered the light of life, okay, and their rightful right response were to fell down and worship. Right? They were there to worship him. After traveling such a distance, they were there to worship him. And then they offered um, valuable treasures to, to Jesus. Right? And then you can see it was a demonstration of the sacrificial love and worship for the newborn king. Right, So these are not ordinary treasures. right? So you can see gold. Above all of us know the value of gold. Right, it's a precious metal used for jewelry, ornaments, currency, right, and it represents the royalty or the kingship of Jesus, right, and frankincense, okay, and expensive fragrance of perfume made from trees in India or Arabia region, right, and it represents the divinity and the priesthood of Jesus, and milk, a special kind of costly perfume made from rare thorn bushes in Arabia and Ethiopia region. Right, that is uh, used as, as an antiseptic anointing oil and embalming fluid. Okay, and this represents the humanity and sacrifice of Jesus. Right, so 
I would like to tell you this is that uh, perhaps when the wise men were offering these gifts, they would not know what this gift really meant. Okay, what it signifies about this kingship, you know, because to, to the Jews, right, this goal is something they give to the king. And frankincense is offered to someone that is God, who is God. And mirth is something that is offered to, as you see here, for the dead, for an embalming. Right, but however, when the wise men were offering these gifts, right, they were just offering these diplomatic gifts that they brought from afar because these are the most rare, most hard to find, you know, treasures, most expensive things that their country produce and they offer up to Jesus. But by, by divine providence of God, all these three have much significance to the Jews that they would know that, you know, that this is offered to the king, you know, to, the, uh, to God himself. And subsequently the mirth in terms of preparing even for the death of Jesus. Right, so as we look at this tree gift now, it has a different meaning for us, right, as compared to the wise man. Right, so this is what Christmas is perhaps is about. It's about the worship of Christ. Christmas is about the worship of Christ. It's not about gifts. It's not about buffets. You know, it's not about all the kind of uh, 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 marrying around, but it's about worship of Christ offering our best to God. Right? And this, the star, as the prophecy fulfilled, you can see in verse 5, you know, the king was asking you know, all their own wise men. He says, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is, it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. You see, this is recorded in, in the Old Testament, right? That the Jew, the Messiah will be born, right? So where it is born is even stated in the Bible. Mind you, these are a few hundred years away, eh? so it's not back up, you know. Some people, oh yeah, no, the uh, prophecy in the Bible, all back up, back up, you know, all arranged properly. Right? So if you all know, you know, the... Bible is written over a span of more than 1,400 years with more than 40 writers, all inspired by God at different places at different times, and yet they are able to connect everything together. Okay, so even you have struck uh, your lottery, uh, people say if you, even you have struck your lottery, uh, you still cannot match all the prophecies to arrange so nicely to happen together. You know, right? So, this is the prophecy of uh, uh, the, in the Old Testament that has been fulfilled. Right? So Jesus is the promised Messiah, right? prophesied in the Old Testament, and he is the true ruler and shepherd. However, the star is being perceived as a trap. Okay? Now, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. You can see he was troubled and all the Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief of chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. Right? So you can see he was very troubled. He was worried because, hey, this is king of Jews, you know. Huh? He's the king of Jews. Right? So who is Herod? Herod is the king of Jews at the time under the Roman authority. Okay, by that time, Okay, uh, Jerusalem was already under the Roman authority and the Roman authority did not replace all these uh, local kings. Okay, so Herod was the king of the Jews. So when he heard the king of Jews was born, he was worried because, wow, Jesus is going to take over me. Okay, so he was troubled about this newborn king. He was worried that he would be overthrown. Right, so... Herod summoned the uh, wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And then he went to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. 
And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. You think he wants to worship him? No, he tried to trick the wise men to disclose the location of Jesus, but not to worship, but to kill him. Right? His purpose was to kill Jesus. Right? And in verse 12, see, the wise man is being warned in a dream. Right? The wise man was warned in a dream not to return to Herod. You can see God again speak, spoke to the wise men through the dreams. They departed to their own country by another way. Right? So the wise men usually left secretly by another way, by divine providence, uh, guidance, and protection. Right? In verse 16, then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was trying to trick the wise men, but then right, he himself got tricked, okay, became furious. He was so angry that he sent and killed all the male children. Right? You can see all the how, how insecure he was. Right? He killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years older or under, according to the time that he has ascertained from the wise men. Right? So, all these little children, poor little children, were killed. Right? Because Herod see Jesus as a threat. Right? He did all this to protect his own kingship. He did not understand Right? That Jesus was a different kind of king. Jesus was not a political king. You don't see Jesus come around and then, yeah, he become president. <laughs> you know, President Jesus. Huh? He's not uh, Donald Trump, you know. Right? He wants to be the king in our lives. He come as a king in a different way, in a very gentle way. Because he's a different kind of king. He wants to care for us. He wants to love us and to direct our lives so that we will no longer walk in darkness. Family and friends, do you feel threatened if Jesus were to come to your life? A lot of people feel that threat. You know, yeah. If Jesus will come to my life, oh, are you going to do this? You cannot do that. You know, it's like, oh, so many things. Oh, you're worried about Jesus controlling your life. Why are you worrying about Jesus controlling your life? He's leading you into a better life. He's leading you to do what is right. And as I say, He's not there. He, that's why we always call Jesus, He's a servant king. He's not the kind of king in the world. He's a servant king. He come and help us and minister to us, which is all what all of us need. He's not the kind of king that you say, like, you know, Qing Shi Wang, you know, the Chinese emperor in the Qin dynasty that control everything. You, he asks you to go right, you cannot go anywhere. But God wants to change our heart so that willingly we know what is right to do and we'll go to the right way. Follow the star and be his star. Right? Follow the star and you follow Jesus and you'll be his star. Right? So are we like the wise men who came all the way to seek Jesus? Right? You can see two very contrasting response. One group is the wise men. They, they, don't, they are not afraid of all the in, inconveniences, all the hardship, and then they can travel four to five months just to give to the Lord. All these expensive gifts. They were not expecting Jesus to give anything back to them. They were just there to offer up what they have, all the best to, to Jesus. And on the other hand, we see Herod, King Herod, who felt very threatened. You know, if Jesus were to come into his life, he felt very threatened and wanted to eradicate this Jesus. So what is your response today? Will you follow the star and be his star? That's how we sang this song, right? In Psalms uh, 8, in this uh, verse uh, 4 to 5, it says, When I behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the star which you set in place, right? All this creation of God. It says, What is man that you should be mindful of him? Or the son of man that you should care for him? And that's how God is. He's mindful of us and he's here to care for all of us. Right? When we follow the star, we become his star.
you know, this Chinese phrase it says Zhang Sang Ming Zhu or uh, the you know, we say all especially the daughter, you know, is the oh, precious pearl. Uh, God will hold us as his treasured possessions in his hand. In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You know what a privilege you Jesus is inviting you to become his children, you know, to come into the fold, the fold of God and be his children. All of us are precious to him. We are his precious stars. Right? So will you invite him to be the star of your life? Will you invite and let Jesus be the star of your life. I hope that today you will have this opportunity to invite Jesus into your life. I'd like to invite all of us to bow for a word of prayer. And I'm going to give you time and to invite you to come to know Jesus. To let Jesus be the star of your life. Yes, and let him make you his star. Be his star because he loves you and he cares for you. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming into the world to save us, not to condemn us, but to lead us into your righteous path. Lord, help us to put away all the misconceptions that you are here to as like an authoritarian. But Lord, you come. I am Servant King, Lord, to care for us, to love us, to direct us, so that our lives may be transformed. Because we know that we have been corrupted by sin, and today we really need you, Lord, to come into our lives, to change our lives. Yes, oh Lord, help us not to see you as a threat, not for some of us who have yet to know you or who have strayed away from you, who have put you aside. Oh Lord, today help us to invite you to come into our lives once again. Family and friends, I would like to invite you to say a prayer to God if you want to invite Jesus into your life. Even if you have known Jesus before, but you have strayed away from the Lord, today I invite you to say a prayer after me so that you can come back to this home. Yes, our God has opened His arms to receive you to love you and to hold you as His precious past. He wants to give you the right to become children of God. And so if you want to come back to God, come back to Christ, you want to turn from your ways and just walk with our Lord Jesus Christ, I invite you to say a prayer after me in your heart, right? You can just say it in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving my life. I believe you died for my sins and you rose on the third day. I invite you to come into my heart to be my Savior and be my Lord. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, if you have prayed a prayer, 
uh, rejoice together with you. You can uh, approach any one of us. You can also approach me later if you have prayed. Right? And we hope that we will be able to help you right, to continue to know God and worship God. Right? Because walking with God, you need guidance. Right? So God has sent His star and God has sent people and we are His guide on earth to guide one another to walk in this journey. Because we are never alone by ourselves. Right? God created us to be a community. So in this community, we grow in the Word of God and we grow in the relationship with one another right? so that we can know more about God. Right? So yeah, later you can uh, do that as you uh, when uh, after the, the meeting itself.